here, bro. <laughs> Just chilling, man. Yeah, I was a little busy. <laughs> About that. Mexico could be missing me this year. I got some other plans. Mm hmm. Well, enjoy for both, man. Yeah. Later. From a place, we upset every single race. Paradise is we name. Come over and you will fall in love. I should stay, have a special time of the year where we just get away. Most beautiful display. Go no search a million places, travel a million miles to find a vibe like this and have a time like this. You may have a million problems, need some place to ease your mind. Welcome to my place. Good morning, Mr. Boy. Good morning. Call me Josiah, man. Slept well? I did, I did. Your breakfast <laughs> is ready, sir. Great. I'm starved. Your breakfast, sir. Ah, oh, boy. Woo! This looks good, man. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, by the way, um, I gotta be at the Barbados Archives in about an hour. No problem, sir. I met Josiah. Don't worry, man. You get it. <laughs> hey.
Mr. Boy. Hello, how are you? You say you're from the Carolinas? Yes, I am indeed. Several years ago, we had another gentleman who came to do some genealogy research. Uh huh. And I heard that when he arrived at the airport, he knelt down and kissed the tarmac. I mean, I'm happy I came, but I don't think I'll be going so far. Some documents you can cancel. Uh huh. This is what I've been able to find for you. Have a look. And if you have any issues or problems, you just come back to me. Thank so you. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. It was the year of our Lord, 1663. March 24th would forever alter the history of the New World. And it all began at the great Colleton House in Barbados. I, Josiah Boeing, was there to bear witness as Master Drayton sent me to Colleton to help with the preparations. Master Colleton was different to Master Drayton, a little forgetful, and he would never call me by my name. Only Drayton, cause that's where I come from, he said. Drayton, we mustn't be late. John Colton was a prominent Barbadian planter, royalist, and in the eyes of his peers, a visionary. But to we, he was just massa. It was by his suggestion that the king was petitioned for a charter allowing the settlement that would become the Carolinas. <sighs> News of the Carolinas grant of 1663 garnered the attention of many planters in Barbados. Land had become scarce and expensive, and Barbados was overcrowded with aristocrats seeking wild pleasure and vast fortune. Where is the Carolinas Grant? Drayton, can't you see me sweating? Fetch me a drink. I wasn't well read at the time. I was still learning. I didn't understand everything on the paper. But I did recognize one word. Freedom. Ah, yes. 
Your bond to me is truly nearly up your hand. You have been an excellent servant, executing my every will with your toil. I shall consider the documents for your release. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Master Collison. I dreamt of the day when I would do like Johannes. Be free in the ah. land I was born. Ah. Here you the are. The land my father and I toiled. But that wasn't something afforded to my kind. Not in this lifetime, at least. We belong to one kind of Barbados. And Master Colleton, Master Drayton, and even Johannes belonged to another. Where to next, boss, man? A spice town, bro. Any good food places out there? Yeah, man. I know quite a few. All right. Love this song. You into Sota? I mean, not really, but this sounds good. You gotta come back for a cup over and you will really love it. You'll we'll see. <laughs> Hey, look at this dude. Charlton. Charleston. South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, that's where, where I'm from. You're from here? Yeah. I'm connected with Barbados and Arlington Hotel Spike Sound? Yeah, man. Should probably send some information about it. So Yeah, the wheels back in. Mm. They go there the marks. Hey, that's boy. Oh, yes, see boy in long. You talk about skipping a break. Man, a boy. Well, I beg your pardon. But well, you look like a boy for truth. You, you, guys, you guys know the boy family? I'm actually trying to track down some relatives. See what can you know, Mervyn? Huh? I know this boy knows from far. You know, your camp isn't at all, at all, at all, at all. I mean, if you're looking for the boy family, you got to look somewhere up north. No? Huh? The last time I seen Leroy, he left somewhere in Pike Corner. But that was a real long time ago, you know. And I ain't seen in recent times. Mm. And the last thing I hear is that he didn't do it again. So Leroy from Pike Corner said, Lucy, I mean, you guys been great help to me. I didn't actually think I'll find any living members. So, I don't think you might find a relative now. But because the last time I didn't know, and I hear things about it here, they really doing too good. But you can go and check for yourself, my brother. I can tell you the truth, right? Every discussions we never really talk much about family life. Yeah. But I suspect he got a son. I ain't know his name, but <laughs> I hear so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, thanks a lot, guys. You guys have been a great help to me. Um, but you know that information ain't free. But you know you got left around. Yeah. <laughs> That's no problem. Information ain't for free. We'll get the guys around, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The master was anxious to share the news of the Carolina Grant with his company. In attendance was his son, Peter Collington, Edward Hyde, who would become the Earl of Clarendon, George Monk, the Duke of Albemarle, William Lord Craven, John Lord Berkeley, Lord Anthony Ashley Cooper, Sir George Carteret, and Sir William Berkeley. Here, here. What shall I will to my own sons? This house and plantation are valuable, yes. And we Collitons have done well for ourselves on this finest spot of land. A mere 70 years and the only means for a man to make his mark mean marriage or heritage. Our lands are ambitious, but Barbados just does not have enough land for Peter to really spread his wings. It is why, at the suggestion of Sir John, we must petition the king 
for a grant of this rich and fertile province. Ah, and with gratitude to Lord Ashley and the fine gentlemen in my company, I am pleased to say that the time has come for us to chart our own fate and make our own opportunities. Here, yeah. here, here. We can make a flourishing, profitable colony with all that we have learnt of husbandry here in the tropics. Our management of the land, slave labour and crops is unmatched by any around the globe. There will be forests for timber, provender for trade, and with that cunning of mind that we have here in Barbados, we can profit splendidly off of our sugar. And it will be a source of goods from a trading partner who will be indebted to us for their very existence. And the Carolinas are the heritage that this Barbados gentleman will carve for his descendants. The names Colleton, Ashley, Berkeley, Monk, Hyde, and Carteret will be remembered throughout the ages! Yeah! These men would go on to become known as the Lord Proprietors of the Carolinas. But at this moment, they had christened themselves the Adventurers. I remember the anger boiling up, watching them in their merriment. These noble men spent many an afternoon drinking and fretting about how condensed the island had become with rich men like them who buy up the land and live wild and lavish lives. Meanwhile, we poor blacks couldn't even own the skin on our back. I want in, and he insists on drinking the best rum in Barbados. <laughs> Baby, we're heading north next. Sit tight, buddy. We got time. Why don't you eat your food, go to the beach and cool out? It will help us stop your head from spinning. <laughs> this is strong, man. <laughs> That's the best beer, you remember, at the bar tender set. Sure, but food is good too. Thank you. Good beer, you food too as well. Yeah. Enjoy. Mm. So you're looking for your family? Yeah. I mean, started off as a casual search, right. but then I got some information that led me to some letters after I read them. I just had to find out more. And that's why I'm still here. Whoa, that's some story. I see no way you told us to us at Colleton. I will trade her as much as I can. Man, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. But let's dig back in, man. This looks good. We call this macaroni pie, right? Master Colleton's son, Peter, would go on to submit proposals to the Lord Proprietors for the settlement of a colony. We, myself and slaves of 60 various plantations, were chosen to take the trip. Hello there. <laughs> John Yeamans, who would later join the Barbados Carolina story, headed the expedition. Gamers was a ruthless adventurer. He was feared by many a man and slave, and rightfully so. Everyone knew of the rumor that surrounded him and his new wife. Not too long ago, Mrs. Yeamans was called Mrs. Barringer and married to Colonel Benjamin Barringer, best friend and business partner to Mr. Yeamans. Mr. Barringer would frequently leave his loving wife in the protection of his friend while he traveled on business. 
On his last day at home, Mr. Barringer died after a long suffering with a mysterious illness. All the murmurs around the town were that Mr. Yeamans and Barringer's wife did the deed. was cleared of any suspicion but no one was convinced Goat brains, be careful with my barrels of gunpowder. Ah, I can hardly contain myself, as Hilton has sent back great news from the Carolinas. Surely our pockets are enough that we can anchor a vessel once we settle the place. Not to mention, those of us on the first ship back receive 150 extra acres of land. Certainly a generous offer, but it is good that I've been charged with this undertaking. Verily I say, the Lord proprietors have grown soft. If this venture is to be as successful as the Barbados colony, you have got to manage your property right. Break these Negroes like horses and train them like a hound to get your money's worth. Drayton, you dunderhead! You bloody idiot! You're a waste of my time! Yeamans had a short fugage on departure day. We all knew his mind was plagued with thoughts of leaving Mrs. Yeamans for such a long period and not due to any love sickness. After all, it was the long travels of her late husband and Yeamans business partner, Colonel Benjamin Barringer, that stoked the flames of love between them. Margaret, out here is no place for a lady. I will get Drayton to carry you straight home. Mr. Yeamans, I detest being cooped up at Beringer's house. Yeamans' house. Must you go, John, dear? I, I hate to be alone in that mansion. It shan't be too long, my love. Once the savages are settled and more commodious accommodations are set, I shall send for you at once. Oh, the journey sounds awfully treacherous. Why not send a man in your absence and attend later? What? And lose the confidence of the proprietors and my men? Surely they would rethink appointing me Lieutenant General, Governor of Clarendon, Cape Fear, and those to the South and West, if I were to cower at such an adventure. I suppose I shall find something to do in your absence. Margaret, I'm doing this for us. There's only so much I can extract from Barbados, and the reports of the continent show that the Carolinas will pour profits into our pockets like a fountain of gold. Very well. You see to it that she reaches home before sun sets and get yourself back here before I set sail. Hi, yo! Mrs. Yemans! Mrs. Yemans! Mrs. Yemans! What possesses you to shout my name so, boy? Mr. Yemans want me to accompany you home to St. Peter. Not unless he plans on leaving you here. I have no intentions of going home. I... But miss, master gives strict orders. Oh, well, then you tell your master that he is the manager of ships and not I. Now leave me. But miss, miss, but miss. Mr. Yeamans would be very interested to know that you, sir, are... Oh, Lord Ashley. Lord Ashley! Won't you mind accompanying me to my destination? Why, Mrs. Yeamans? A lady should always have an escort. Yes, sir. <laughs> They'll call it the Carolinas, after their new king, Charlie. But what was Charlie to a slave? Having to leave my home was hard enough, and it made me ache even more to know I would be leaving such a beauty in Barbados to face fresh hell for me and my brethren on this long journey. You look like you could use some help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wait, 
The journey was more harrowing than we could imagine. It wrecked the Port Royal. The three brothers ended up in Virginia and we were forced to dock in Bermuda to recover and repair. are loaded onto these water horses. Nothing but devastation befalls us. But Shana, they be horrors greater than ships sailing to the Hades Gate. Not all fears pale in comparison to the past days and nights. Brackish waters, storms all the time, worms in the food, sickness and death everywhere. My heart is heavy for Susanna who was sailing on the Port Royal. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? I fear not even in death will we escape our bondage. This turmoil will surely live on in our children and our children's children. But if to live here is to die, clutching ashes, fist tight, skull dry, I shall sing songs of the skeleton. It is not. It is not, it is not enough. This journey will be trying without a doubt, but I'm just grateful to have a friend in this new strange land. <laughs> After all we have suffered together, I think of you as a sister, Shauna. One ship wrecked, another adrift. If improper word reaches home, Margaret will surely think herself a widow. A man has got to think of his family. It is Providence that brought us to Bermuda. It is Providence telling me to go back home. Bermuda has vessels setting sail for Barbados and I can sense that Margaret needs me. I can feel it. I am appointing therefore Colonel William Sales in my stead. Shauna, you and a few other Negroes shall attend the journey back with me. Oh no, no. It's not that they strike me down now that to force me upon another ship. My heart won't bear the journey. This wrong, Shana. I shall pray to Yem and Ya for mercy and safe passage. No go. Master Yem is already on edge. Josiah, is it? <laughs> From the Colleton, so I hear. <laughs> you see, you've been asking about me. Hi, right, Josiah Bowen from the Collitons. From my neighbor String Barry, the Drayton's plantation. That's why Master called me Drayton. Well, what up, you, Afi? Were you born in the forest just before coming to the Yemen's? <laughs> Where it surely travels around these parts. <laughs> no. I've changed many hands since I've been stolen from my homeland. Mm. The mistresses never seem to have favor with me. <laughs> Look, tis your beauty they don't find favor with. Even Mrs. Yemen's pales beside you. <laughs> <laughs> then to behold, this beauty is a curse in this new life. Mm. It doth not allow one enough to settle for the lonesomeness to subside. Is with no tremendous reason where they load us off and all these ships like property. At the risk of sounding foolish, mm. dare I say, I envy the property returning. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Yemen's mean spiritedness is less daunting than the journey ahead. <laughs> For a daughter of a priest, she misses the hell in the truth. 
I never thought that anything can turn the master's mind from the riches to see floating in New Carolina here. <laughs> Wayla Carolina colony is two birds in the bush. Mm -hmm. The mistress is one bird in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> will be that one's poison. <laughs> we may very well have a third change of governor by the time we get from this Bermuda. <laughs> it's why he was master Yaman's choice instead of the younger, sturdier Joseph West. <laughs> what kind of adventure is made craven by a storm and a little wreck? <laughs> You see, fair fair is more than this sea. Hmm. He fears what he can imagine and can't see. Then he say, uh, a man should think of his family. Hmm. <laughs> the master fears that she will find another in his absence and poison him to escape as she did with Mr. Berenger. <laughs> Very let say on to you. A thief from a thief. Let God laugh. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, a thief from a thief, met God laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, back on the boat. We don't want those Spaniards coming and taking the Carolinas from right under our noses. Now wait, youngster, mm -hmm. you won't hear this from me, but I hear Boeing got a son that lived through the same yap as he. Really? So you, you got a name or address? I got no name, but you can tell a Boeing anywhere. You just got your pie corner mm -hmm. and you ask around and somebody liable to help you. Right. You understand? Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Yeah. Still back to the house. When we finally landed, we were all struck by the natural beauty of the Carolinas. It was more than we could ever imagine. The natural raw beauty of the place and the wonderful wildlife was amazing. But that would all soon change. Upon arrival, they met an Indian cacique of Kiowa. The cacique and his company invited sales to settle, and settle they surely did. Hey, don't give up, boss man. Yeah, man. I've been asking around. We were here back up for a call in the morning. Yeah. I feel a lot of change. <laughs> I mean, it feels like I'm so close, but still yet so far, you know? <laughs> You want something to smile about, smile about life Think of every tribulation that you get through Take a wine on the side now, enjoy the vibes Soak up every little moment I could forget it all, forget it all in me Won't think about it It took many crops before the masters learned rice would work better in the new climate. Mm -hmm. 
They spared no expense when it came to the erection of their buildings. For the Charleston Single House, plans were drawn up in England and Barbadian surveyor William Culpepper was brought in for his expertise. I ended up with Drayton's again, this time under his son Thomas who sailed from Barbados. Afi and I made a home for ourselves at Magnolia Plantation. Eventually, we got in the rhythm of things and soon welcomed our first son. The Barbadian aristocrats were cautious at first mindful of the last failed settlement at Cape Fear. But after the proclamation of the Carolinas' rich and fertile soils, settlers arrived in droves. A walk through the Carolinas was like walking through a memory. Colonel Sales and company certainly made themselves feel at home, with parishes like St. Andrew, St. Thomas, Christ Church, St. John and St. James and many similar churches and buildings, it was sure that these noble men had Barbados on the mind. Master Seals, he ain't look too good tonight. Every dog got a deer. Which one's I uh, What if we take over next is worse? Afi, yes, I shall. I, I'll leave tomorrow troubles for tomorrow. Colonel Sales reports that the work on the Carolinas is indeed a success. Oh, so does that mean that you regret coming home to me and not continuing on your journey, my love? Of course not. Besides, I have great plans for the Carolinas, and I've set up lucrative trade with them from here in Barbados. I send them sugar, molasses, slaves, and such like, and in return they send lumber, pipe staves, rice, and other precious commodities. Tell me more about this great plan you have, my love.
It has been a pleasure to serve as governor for the best and oldest families of the Carolinas here in Charleston. Ashley, Gibbs, Colleton, West, Foster, Drayton, and Middleton. And long may your legacies be here in this place. We have matured the colony beyond all expectations. Thanks to your hard work and Anglican fortitude. The Barbados planter has made an excellent blueprint. Now, Sales, why does this sound like a farewell speech? Because we've put in the work, Foster. We, we, we've tested the crops, the sugar, the cotton, indigo, the tobacco, and now we've, we've hit on the rice. We got the newer Negroes in from the rice growing territories of the dark continent. And on this continent, we, we've conquered the savages and the climate. Are you preaching a sermon, Colonel? If you are, thank God for the Barbadian know-how uh, and building. I have to say, the splendid plantation homes remind me of Whole Town and Spice Town. It's a comfort to know that our children will worship and work in the parish churches of St. John, St. James, St. Andrew, St. Philip, St. Thomas, and Christchurch. Indeed, it's good to see the stamp of management that we have put on this colony. Anglican, Barbadian, mastery over servant and slave to the prosperity of civil man. But I'm tired, Foster, tired. So yes, this is a farewell. I've heard as much. You hear much. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please. I am in fact announcing my retirement and I am announcing as my interim successor until such time as the Lord Proprietors and Assembly shall formalize one, Mr. Joseph West. <laughs> Make way, make way for Sir John Yeamans Landgrave. That's right, Landgrave, which Colonel Sales outranks you and Mr. Joseph West. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Proprietors have named me a Landgrave. And certainly, the highest ranked gentleman in this colony cannot be genuflecting to anyone. And such it falls on me to take up the burden and privilege of governorship. Come now, gentlemen, attend to me. We have much to talk about these mamby pamby laws and concessions you've been passing in my absence. Ah, Drayton, fetch me my things. Turns out Affy was right to worry. Colonel Sales died shortly after. And never had we seen a man so wedded to destruction and divorced from prudence and decency as Langrave Sir John Yeamans. He would go on to plunder the treasury, piss off port workers, throttle profit, and starve the settlers. Luckily, his tyranny was short-lived. Rumor had it, Mrs. Yemans was unfaithful again, and it got the best of him. Afi and I settled into a quiet life on Magnolia Plantation. But sometimes I would get homesick, so I'd watch the water that brought me to the Carolinas, dreaming of returning to Barbados. But wait, it ain't safe we make it back though. I mean, it doesn't, right? But maybe a couple of boys will find their way back here, some way fulfilling his final wishes. Maybe. Barbie is truly a rare influencer, boy. Are you sorry you gotta link up with some of your people? That would be a same pandy cake. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 stop, stop. Big man. No, sorry, 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 but, but look. Excuse me, sir. 
are you Leroy Bowen? Who asking? My name is Josiah Bowen, sir. <laughs> Look familiar? Uh -huh. So, your ma send you? <laughs> oh no, it's nothing like that. Actually, I think we might be related. I'm visiting Barbados from Carolina. And I just want to find out a little more what my family is like. Ah, I had a fella like you a couple of years back. Really? Well, if his story is interested in, hmm. I have plenty. You hungry? Yes, please. Actually, and I got a lot of questions for you. By the way, do you know all your fishermen friends think you've passed? Good. You just talk people business too much. <laughs> I got a lot of questions for you. Man. That's good. <laughs> Safe travels home, Mr. Bowen. Thank you so much. I mean, I kind of already am home. Well, you do come again soon. <laughs> You'll see. All right. Said if you know, they never know where you come from. God bless a little island. Make great for that of my land. If you know where you're from, my rock, my rock, my rock. My I'll definitely be back. My rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock. That can't affect your beauty This country I call in my heart From these roots I cannot depart I have all I need All for fathers so the seed And created this blessed land I'm proud to be Barbados You know, you never know Where you come from God bless the little island Hey Make grateful as a my land Just letting you know I made it in safely <laughs> Are you going to finally tell me What you were laughing at That time on the beach? Oh, come on, man. The umbrella was possessed. <laughs> You're funny. My rock, my rock, Bobby. Those, my rock. My rock, my rock, my rock. My rock, my rock, my home. My rock, my rock, Bobby.
place with plenty of love and we're so much sure you make it. See this atmosphere of love does bring so much smiling faces. Bring me a bottle of rum so this party can done. Roll with sun, sea and sun. Yeah. 